Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. This lecture is the first one in uh, mechanics uh, part of the Physics for Teens course presented on Unizor.com website. If you found this lecture anywhere else, like on YouTube, for instance, I do suggest you actually to go to Unizor.com uh, to Physics for Teens uh, section and uh, you will find the same lectures. Uh, but in addition, on the website you have certain functionality built into it. You have notes for each lecture and you will have exams. The site is free, has no advertising, so there are many advantages and no disadvantages to use Unizor.com as the base for your uh, studying. So this is the first lecture and the first lecture uh, is dedicated to a concept of motion. Okay, so we are talking about motion. Obviously, when we are talking about mechanics, especially the first part of the mechanics, which is called kinematics, which basically studies the motion. There are no forces yet involved, just pure motion. We have to talk about how things are moving. Okay, now, when we are talking about um, moving, we have to talk about two things. Number one, what is moving, and number two, uh, what basically the moving itself uh, encounters, what, what it represents and, and how can we describe it. So the object and its movement. Well, the object which we will consider most frequently in this course, which is moving, is basically a mathematical point. Yes, I understand that there are different objects, there are cars and there are blocks or something else which are moving and we will probably resort to certain words which describe them. However, in all these cases, or in most of these cases, we will consider the car as a point actually, which is moving in certain direction, or a rocket or something else. So whenever we are talking about movement, right now and in most other cases in the future, we will talk about movement of the point. Where? In the space, obviously. Now, what is the space? Space is our three-dimensional space, which we know um, about. So, uh, basically, these two uh, characteristics, um, the point and a three-dimensional space, um, where it exists, define the object. Now, what is the movement? Well, it's a movement of the point, right? So, basically, we have to um, somehow study how the point moves in space. Okay, that's fine. Now these are kind of qualitative characteristics. The second thing which we must actually do is to go to a quantitative characteristics. Alright, so what is the quantitative characteristic of a point? Well, point has no dimensions, right? So it's basically, well, a point. A point is not defined by mathematicians. It's undefined concept, as unfortunately many others, and we don't have any other choice but to basically say that this is undefined. So point is uh, uh, point has a, a zero dimension in, in, in any direction, and that's basically all the quantitative characteristics we can suggest. Now, talking about movement within the space, well, we have to really uh, have coordinates in this space, right? And that we, th then we can actually quantify what movement actually is. When the point has some coordinates uh, at one particular moment in time and other coordinates in another moment of time. Okay, so these are quantitative characteristics of the movement. But now I have used another very interesting concept, the concept of time. Also, by the way, undefined, unfortunately. However, we can measure it. We can, well, time actually is um, our view uh, onto any process. So all the processes which are happening in this universe, they are actually, they, they are occurring in time. And we can measure the progress of one process relative to another. And actually, that's how we can establish the unit of time. Like, for example, um, we can say that uh, one rotation of the Earth, the planet, uh, around its axis um, is 24 hours, 
and every hour is 60 minutes and every minute is 60 seconds and that's basically how we introduce a unit of measurement so uh, one second would be one second it's uh, 186 400 off rotation of the Earth around the uh, its own axis. I mean, there are other equivalent measures, maybe much more precise, but for our purposes, all we need to basically say is that we can measure time. And time is a very important characteristic of every movement, because whenever we are saying that the point changed the position in time, we actually have to understand what time is and we have to measure the time as much as we can measure change in the position. So change in the position is kind of more um, uh, easy, if you wish, because this is basically the length. Now, if we have a system of coordinates, x, y, and z, now the point has certain height, certain coordinates, uh, along the x-axis, uh, along the y-axis. Now this is my x-coordinate, this is my y-coordinate, and, uh, and uh, something like this. And this is my z-coordinates, all right? So, we know how to measure the position, and we know how to measure time. Now that's basically sufficient to describe the motion as um, some kind of a function uh, of the position of time. So the position would be our value of the function and time would be an argument. The only thing is we really have to uh, say whenever we are talking about time we have to know where is the beginning of time and what's the unit of time. Okay, unit of time for instance is a second, we have already established that and by the way the second is a, a standard for international uh, research in, in, in physics. Now, as far as uh, the beginning of time, well, we don't really know uh, what, what's, what's the proper beginning of time anyway. Now, traditionally, if we are talking about movement, the beginning of time is usually, at least in all practical sense, um, is uh, the beginning of the movement. So whenever we are saying, okay, at certain moment of time um, uh, an object uh, starts moving, well, that particular starting time, we can always say this is the time zero. This is t equal to zero. Initial moment, initial start of the movement. I mean, there might be some other cases. It, it depends on the, on, on the task at hand. Uh, however, it, it's reasonable to assume that whenever the start, whenever the, the object starts moving, we are saying, okay, the beginning is, beginning of time is the moment it starts. Great. Now, how about position? Again, we do have uh, measures of the lengths on each, uh, on, on each uh, axis. Uh, usually, we are using in international standards, it's meter which is the standard uh, as the length. Everything else obviously can be derived from the meter, millimeter, kilometer, even inches and, and miles, etc. So let's, let's use the meter as a, as, a, as a unit. But again, where is the origin of coordinate and what's the directions of the axis? Well, again, it's basically up to us because if we are describing something, we are describing by establishing what is the origin uh, of the coordinate, where are the directions of the axis, and what is the beginning of the time. And again, the most convenient way in many cases, in many practical cases, to use um, uh, as an origin of coordinate the point exactly where the uh, movement starts. Now, as far as the direction of the axis, well, it depends, again. In, mo in most of the cases where we know that the, uh, the, 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 the uh, object is moving along, along the straight line, 
we will usually put the x-axis along that direction, in which case y and z will always be equal to zero because the object will be moving along the x-axis. That's the most convenient kind of way in many cases, <coughs> and obviously we will use it. And there are obviously different cases. For instance, if the, mo if the object is circulating around some center, then obviously we will use the xy plane within the plane of the movement, and z would be perpendicular to it, and it will always be equal to zero, right? So that's also kind of convenient. So it's up to us, but we do have to choose the origin of coordinate, we have to choose the direction of the axis, and we have to choose the moment where we start um, uh, counting the time. Now, the units are already established. A second for the time and the meter for each um, axis of the coordinates. Now, if we have done what I was just suggesting and put the origin of coordinate exactly to the point where the movement starts, then we can say that our functions uh, of coordinates as functions of time um, are such that at moment zero they all are equal to zero because at moment zero we have chosen that's where the start start of the movement actually is located and we have that this is the origin of coordinate so at moment zero we are in the origin of coordinate and then the movement starts. This is one of the convenient cases. Now, so how to describe the, uh, the motion? Well, the motion is described by these three functions which exist in our established system of Cartesian coordinates uh, with certain moment in time chosen as the beginning of, of the time um, and obviously the units of measuring uh, units of measurements of the lengths uh, to know the position and, and the time to know the time are established and well standardized in this case and in many others I will use the second for the time and the meter for um, for the lengths, because these are international standards. So, basically, all I'm saying is that these three functions, together with the system of coordinates and the beginning of time that we have kind of established or agreed upon, these are the quantitative characteristics of any motion. And that's the result of this, basically, discussion which, which I wanted to, um, to, 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 to provide today. This is something which is the most important point. These three functions are defining the motion within the system of coordinates and within the uh, time frame. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.